I, I need to be persuaded that uh, class has become an emerging and uh, significant factor in our attempts to explain how um, South Africans vote. Um, the strongest coincidence between, uh, I mean, is, 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 is the one between race um, and voting patterns. And I think in the foreseeable future, um, that, it, that will remain the case. That's not the same as arguing that uh, the coincidence between race and voting patterns will always benefit the ANC and the, and the Democratic Alliance. Now, you talk about class. Uh, there are two myths I found, I found interesting in debates about this year's election. The first myth is how decisive the middle class, particularly the black middle class, is going to be in this election. If you use the measure of uh, people who earn 5,000 rand or more uh, per month, you end up with a middle class in total of about 5 million South Africans. Uh, yes, the black middle class since 1994 has grown, um, as you can see, exponentially. Um, <laughs> yes. um, but, but the black middle class remains uh, small relative to the population as a whole, relative to the black population um, as a whole. In electoral terms, therefore, I, I don't buy this argument that the middle class or the black middle class in particular is going to be a decisive factor um, in this election. Tied to that idea, um, well, most importantly, the black middle class is not a monolith. This is no, we're not talking about the lump of clay. The fact that they are all middle class does not, seem, does not mean they have the same political preferences and the same antipathies to our certain parties, including the ANC. Um, tied to that, or allied to that myth, is the myth of um, the born freeze. Now, I don't buy the notion of born freeze either. Because you can't argue that just, people, just because people were born in the same year, they will have the same political preferences mm -hmm. or antipathies. Uh, I, I, think, I think that argument is uh, nonsensical. And, and therefore, um, the attempt to portray the born freeze as a group of people who are going to abandon the ANC in, in large numbers because they did not have a direct experience uh, of apartheid. First of all, it's a misunderstanding of how collective memory works. Um, and secondly, um, denies this group of people of their class context, their racial context, uh, or even of their political context in which they have different uh, political um, um, preferences. Um, and therefore, I, don't, I, I personally don't, I, I don't believe in the existence of uh, born freeze in the manner that people are using the phrase. I am not suggesting that no one was born in 1994. Uh, that's not what I'm suggesting. All I'm saying is that just because they were all born in 1994 does not mean um, they have the same political preferences. Now, to go back to the issue of race, uh, the Democratic Alliance has a problem. Uh, the problem is internal and it is external. Um, in, in, internally, there's a growing tension that is developing between what I call the pragmatic impulse and the conservative impulse. Now, the conservative impulse comes in two ways. You, you have the old nets and the old progs. The old progs, old progs or our version of the Tea Party, um, are very interesting to me. They believe that they're true custodians of liberalism, and they argue in ways which suggest that liberalism is, is a monolith, um, is a lump of clay, whereas liberalism is a quarrelsome uh, um, family of ideas, you know? So this idea that there's any group of liberals in this country who represent a quintessential uh, South African liberalism um, is a myth. Um, and then you have the so-called emerging black caucus in the DA. Now we all know uh, that that does not exist. The DA tells us there's no such thing, it doesn't exist. Uh, but we'll talk about it anyway. But they have rise at uh, the new is us. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and, and the dilemma there is that the pragmatic impulse recognizes that in order for the DA to grow significantly, it has to break the current ceiling. And the current ceiling is about the fact that the DA has hit a ceiling of support within its traditional support base. It can only grow above the, or beyond the ceiling if it makes significant inroads amongst um, black voters. That's not going to happen in this election. 
um, in any significant way. Partly because even internally, the so-called Black Caucus recognizes that the DA um, remains ambivalent or ambiguous towards policy positions such as um, affirmative action, BE, uh, employment equity. They, they've added to that list of late land reform. You know. um, so that, that external orientation and internal orientation of the dilemma the DA faces, I think is going to constrain um, their growth. They are not going to lose support. If there is one party I'm certain is not going to lose support, um, it is the DA, you know. Now, of course, as I said, the coincidence between race and, ele and election outcomes favors the ANC. But you, you have to look at how the ANC has been performing since 2004. Um, 60, I think 69.6 in 2004, 65.9 in 2009, my estimation, look at, looking at all the surveys and what people are saying, um, now playing my role also as an astrologer, and sometimes we, sometimes we attach statistics to give some legitimacy to our astrology. Um, but as an astrologer, uh, my estimation is that uh, the ANC will fall somewhere between 60 and uh, 62%. But over time, you are going to see a disjunction growing between electoral support and the legitimacy of the ANC. Um, another distinction will be um, a gap between the ANC's electoral support and the legitimacy uh, of the state. Now, if I'm correct in thinking the ANC is going to uh, lose more support in this election, even though it doesn't fall below um, 60%, um, the next question that arises is how many elections will it take um, for the ANC? to lose an election. But let me make this final point. People tend to think that the losses that the ANC will suffer over time will benefit the DA. Um, for me, that kind of thinking is problematic because it's about the imagination. There's a failure in this country to imagine the future of this country without the ANC and the DA. Um, whereas what we need to engage in is an exercise in reimagination and we need to reimagine our future with or without these two parties. Because there exists the possibility that generational and other shifts may force future South Africans um, to look, I mean, to, to, to engage in a search for an alternative to both the ANC and the DA.